A very warm welcome to this, the first film in our Fitting Out Walls series, in which we explain the principles on which non-load-bearing walls are constructed. As the term non-load-bearing wall suggests, these walls do not form part of a building's load-bearing structure. This means that they are required neither to transfer the dead loads created by the weight of the structure, nor the vertical live loads generated by the use of the building or by the wind. The primary purpose of non-load-bearing walls is to provide lateral separators for the creation of space. It's for this reason that they are also referred to as partition walls. Non-load-bearing walls have to be self-supporting and provide sound insulation between neighbouring rooms. A self-supporting wall is one that is able to stand without assistance from supports or bracing walls, for example. Non-load-bearing walls must also be able to bear their own weight and that of any objects, such as cupboards and pictures, for example, that are hung on them, and to absorb horizontal forces, such as people running against them. Sound insulation means that the walls must reduce or prevent the transmission of sound from one room to another. A non-load-bearing wall generally runs from the upper edge of one load-bearing floor to the lower edge of the one above it. It sits on the slab below it and its top is held in place to prevent it from toppling over. However, this upper fixing must be decoupled to prevent a sagging floor above from exerting pressure on the partition wall, which would lead to constraint and thus damage to the wall. Just like load-bearing walls, non-load-bearing walls can be masonry walls made of natural stone, sand, lime or ceramic bricks, aerated concrete or another similar material. The advantages of masonry walls, as long as they are of an appropriate bulk density and thickness, are good noise insulation and good thermal storage capacity. In addition, heavy equipment and furniture can be fixed to them without the need for additional reinforcement. Standard wall thicknesses range from 10 to 24 centimetres. The alternative technique involves the use of plasterboard stud walls, which are also referred to as lightweight partition walls due to their low self-weight. They consist of vertical metal or timber members, or studs, sheeted out with gypsum, plaster or fibreboard panels. They are generally between 10 and 20 centimetres thick. This photograph shows a corridor in our Tropos data centre in Leipzig with load-bearing reinforced concrete walls on the left and non-load-bearing plasterboard walls on the right. Here you can see the structure of a metal and plasterboard stud wall. C-shaped galvanised sheet steel profiles stand in U-shaped profiles that are fixed to the floor and the ceiling. Similar to a suspended ceiling, a single or double layer of plasterboard sheets is then screwed to this framework of studs. The joints between the sheets and the screw indents are filled to provide the decorator with a smooth surface to paint. Insulation fitted between the studs gives the wall a soundproofing effect. Openings for doors and windows are made by spanning the opening with a horizontal profile similar to a lintel. The studs that form the sides of the opening are often reinforced so that they can take the forces exerted by the lintel profile and the door. The door reveal is generally also clad in plasterboard. Summary. Non-load-bearing walls have to be self-supporting and provide sound insulation between neighbouring rooms. A self-supporting wall is one that is able to stand without assistance from supports or bracing walls, for example. Non-load-bearing walls can be built using masonry units. The advantages of masonry walls, as long as they are of an appropriate bulk density and thickness, are good noise insulation and good thermal storage. Standard wall thicknesses range from 10 to 24 centimetres. The alternative technique involves the use of lightweight plasterboard stud walls. They are generally between 10 and 20 centimetres thick. Please take a look at the second film in our Fitting Out Walls series, in which we discuss wall coverings and examine some of the most commonly used types.